Hey guys, how the hell are you? Welcome to an all new unbiased gear review. Today we are taking a look at this. The Jackson Pro Series Brandon Ellis Signature Kelly. So first some specs on this instrument. We have a maple neck through body construction with poplar body wings, 25 and a half inch scale. We have an ebony fretboard with 24 frets, Floyd Rose 1000 series bridge, a master volume knob, and a single Seymour Duncan parallel axis humbucker. So first of all, a shout out to my bro Eric for bringing this by so I can do a review on it while he's visiting Texas down here. This is kind of an interesting instrument. Let's just get into it. So the first thing that we'll notice right away is this has an awesome, incredible black and green crackle finish. One thing to note of whenever you see one of these crackle finishes is that if you hold it up to the light, you definitely can see little spots here or there where the finish is kind of sinking in a little bit. It's just a sort of thing that happens with layering with an instrument like this and glossy finish. It's perfectly normal, so anyone that's taken a look at this thing, that's not necessarily a QC call out. The finish is really, really well done all over this thing. There's not really any indentations. There's no burring of any finish work whatsoever. There's no buildup or anything. Aesthetically, with regards to that finish, there is one thing that I would like to call out just as a personal thing. Notice the headstock there is just what looks like kind of a black cap. It's probably less a cap, more of just a masking thing where they just didn't allow the crackle to go over the front of the headstock there. That is something that just as far as appearances go, as far as looks go, man, I would have loved it if this would have had crackle all around it. All on the back side, okay, it's on the back of the headstock, it's on the back of the neck, the back of the body, the front of the body, it's basically all over this instrument where it ought to be, except for right there. If it was a thing about making the logo stand out a little bit more, may I suggest a drop shadow perhaps? <laughs> But it is what it is. It's just an aesthetic thing. Doesn't come into factor when we're talking about the playability of the instrument. Speaking of appearances sake, kudos to you guys for including a reverse Jackson headstock on this Kelly. In my opinion, the most kick-ass looking of the Jackson headstocks is the reverse inline. So to see it on a Kelly body shape is just kind of wicked. It's just rad, I like it a lot. Other QC things, taking a look at the side of the fretboard, you guys know this is something that I hold very, very highly as something that I look at whenever I'm checking out a new instrument. We do have a little bit of the fret edges just kind of poking up right around here in the upper fret area, but it's very, very minimal. It's honestly like, four frets total right in this area where you can feel it. 
Everything else, like especially on the palm side here, the treble side of the instrument, no issues with that whatsoever. Everything is just in the perfect placement. It's rounded off ever so slightly to make things a little bit more playable. Same with the fretboard edge, rounded off a little bit. Speaking of the fretboard edge, that brings me to the next thing. It's almost as if that rounding of the fretboard edge kind of carries over onto the shoulder of the neck a little bit. I don't know if that was intentional or if that was just kind of a happy accident of designing it that way, but it's almost like with this C profile, it comes up and has a little bit of a, like if these are the shoulders of the neck, it almost comes in a little bit like a U profile sometimes will, right at the fretboard edge, which is admittedly kind of nice. It feels comfortable, it makes it a little bit easier to get around. I'm sure a lot of other players may see that and be like, yeah, it's, that's a non-issue, it's a non-thing, you know, but it is something that I'm just kind of noticing as I play this. It's just interesting. It's a little different, and in my opinion, it's a pretty comfy, so why not mention it? Moving on to this bridge, this bridge is definitely something that we need to mention here because it's a Floyd Rose Thousand series. At this point, we've seen them on so many instruments, especially the ones coming out of Korea, coming out of Indonesia. It's a really well-designed, typically a really well-put-together bridge that holds its tuning really, really well. Where we have an issue on this instrument that we need to talk about is more up with the locking nut. Whether this is a wood thing, whether this is a craftsmanship thing, this seems to be an oversight here. Recently set this thing up in D standard for my buddy so that he could have it playing exactly how he wants it to and exactly the tuning that he wants it to. And everything is nice and battened down here. The strings have no movement whatsoever. The strings are nice and stretched out. Everything should be absolutely perfect with this guitar. What's happening is when you use the trim, even a little bit, like doing like a little thing like this isn't gonna bother it so much, but as soon as you get into like squeals or something like that, you hear that kind of crackling noise that's happening? That's happening up here at the locking nut. It's really weird. It's almost like it's moving the locking nut around, like it's loose, maybe needs to be redoweled or something like that. It's just, it's one of those things that is not super stable at all. And tends to mess with the tuning stability quite a bit. So that's just something that needs to be kept in mind. It kind of leaves me with a little bit of a lack of confidence as far as the tuning stability goes of this instrument, which is unfortunate considering that this guitar is absolutely made to shred on. The feel and finish of the back of the neck, even though it is a polyurethane gloss finish, is just nice and comfortable in the hand. It's nice and fast too it doesn't have any of that gym floor feel it's so it's it's nice and buffed out is what i'm saying it's it's a fast neck despite the gloss finish because a lot of folks don't necessarily care for that getting back to the gloss finish thing though one other thing that should probably be called out is this thing is rather not resonant as i play this out of tune chord it's just the finish itself, and I, I understand that this is a crackle finish, so there's gonna be several layers in place. The finish itself is just kind of choking the wood a little bit. So it's cutting off the sustain, it's cutting off the natural tone of the instrument a little bit. It's kind of making it so that when you plug this in and when you play it through an amp, this Seymour Duncan parallel axis is what's doing the heavy lifting tone wise. But don't take my word for it. Let's head to the tone demo. 
So how does this instrument sound? That's honestly one of the best things about it. just so gnarly, but still super articulate. So definitely something where I ran this instrument through my normal settings in my entire Tower of Power here, running through the Marshalls, running through the Mesa. The amp that this thing loved the most was that Dover. It is just getting me some awesome, extreme thrashy tones from it. pickup is doing a lot of heavy lifting here and this is just an awesome pickup to be doing that heavy lifting super articulate big beefy chords Just the right amount of chunk and the right amount of just kind of everything. It's bright on the top end. It's not uh, overly shrill or anything. It's just allowing enough of that pick attack to come through without being chirpy. <laughs> needs to practice that a little bit more. As a lead pickup, you definitely get a lot of that top end cutting through. It just, it, it cuts through quite a bit. It's definitely something where there's so much top end on tap there that it's definitely leading to a little bit more of a sort of hair metal kind of vibe there. A lot of trouble coming through in that lead plane, which, you know, considering the player that helped design this instrument and all the music that's influenced him as a player, that definitely makes a lot of sense. You know, it's one of those things where dude likes having a lot of articulation because he's got a lot of control over various different styles, the tapping, the sweeping. But just myself as a player, 
you know, the lead thing is one thing. I can definitely dig how this instrument sounds, how that pickup sounds for the tight metal riffs. So I'm, I'm just okay, dude. I can play this thing all day long. Really, really enjoy these tones that I'm getting. <laughs> All the power metal and classic metal oomph. Yeah, dude, I how this thing sounds is honestly one of the best things about it. So overall, my final thought, I actually kind of really like this instrument in terms of the tone in terms of the playability, I mean, this thing is just super inspiring. It's awesome to play on, it's awesome to jam on. It's definitely one of those instruments that is really nice to kind of rest your wrist on and just hit those like super fast palm muted patterns, the tremolo pick patterns. It's just one of those things that's really comfortable for doing that sort of extreme metal riffage on. It's awesome for that. It also looks absolutely badass. Can we agree that despite the fact that the crackle doesn't come over to that top, it's really, really badass looking. It's a Kelly built to shred with all the right appointments and with that reverse headstock. But that locking nut is just such a bummer. That noise that it's making, the lack of tuning stability that it's providing, it leaves me with a bit of a lack of confidence in the craftsmanship that's coming from the factory that made this instrument. So whether it be just this one that we're talking about, or even if you go online and you see and read the horror stories about the instruments that have been coming from that factory, how there have been issues with the woods, there's been issues with the finishes. This one seems to be, for the most part, a really, really well put together instrument, except for this thing, which is just kind of the giant outlier that's killing this instrument. Everything else, you can kind of get used to, you know, the thickness of the finish, choking the tone and sustain a little bit, you know, the slight teeny tiny little bit of fret roughness that's up here. And it's really, really teeny tiny. It's not something like you used to see on Ibanez five or six years ago. This is super minimal amount of fret sprout. This up here is a major thing that is gonna cause the owner of this instrument to have to take it to a luthier, take it to a tech to see what can be done to salvage this instrument, make sure that it stays in playable shape, make sure that it stays in tune so that he can enjoy this for years to come. And that is a bit of a bummer considering this was a $1,200 instrument at the original time of purchase. And now due to the world that we live in, the cost of this instrument has now inflated to $13.50 at the time of this video's production. But Arnold, what are you drinking today? I am so glad that you asked. I am having Achromatic, which is from Weldworks Brewing Company out of Greeley, Colorado. This is a wonderful desserty stout. It is 11.2% alcohol by volume, brewed with toasted marshmallow, milk chocolate graham cracker, and with natural flavors added. But it's all coming together in a very, very awesome dessert stout. Sweet without being overpoweringly so. Mmm. That's just kind of incredible all around. For a full review, please head over to my newest channel, Arnold Drinks. The link is in the description below. I'm not taking away the beer reviews from the end of these review videos, but I'm moving the kind of long-winded, full description kind of videos over to that channel now going forward. If you dig these beer reviews, if you dig my reviews on my Instagram about the various whiskeys I've been trying, that's the new place for you. So check it out. Always still gonna give kind of a quick capsule review of these awesome brews on these videos, but full in-depth moving to that new channel. Check it out. 
give me a subscribe. So thank you guys so very much for tuning in. Please remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel. There's tons more metal and guitar oriented content to come. Also, please remember to check out my new channel, Arnold Drinks on YouTube. Link is in the description below. And as always, remember, take what you do seriously. Do not take yourselves too seriously.